Thank you so much. Um, so my name is Meredith Thompson. I'm a research scientist at the Education Arcade, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Cellverse, which is a game um, where you're, we learn about cell biology through virtual reality. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the game. I'll share a little bit about our publications, um, talk a little bit about our studies, and then talk about some design principles. Um, so the goal of Cellverse is to learn cell biology. It's collaborative, so it's both VR and tablet-based. And um, the audience is high school students initially, but we realize that there's an audience even beyond high school students for this game. So I wanted to show you a little bit of this game, and uh, it's only a minute, and I think it's pretty entertaining. a game where you're inside of a cell and the the premise is that the cell has a type of cystic fibrosis and your goal to figure out what type it is in order to cure um, a student who has cystic fibrosis. And so one of the things that we've done a lot is we did um, a lot of not only studies but publishing throughout the study um, throughout the project. We started out with design and user testing studies. We did a bunch of qualitative um, publishing on a couple of qualitative studies on quantitative studies. And we also have kind of a, a summary document that um, summarizes what we learned over the entire project. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, the different studies. Um, we did a user study of about 60 people. We involved subject matter experts. For example, Ian Cheeseman, who is quoted in the trailer, was one of the people who tried the game out early on and gave us feedback on it. And what we found is that subject matter experts can be helpful and that iterative design cycles improve the game. We did um, a qualitative study of um, eight dyads in 2018 and, um, oh, sorry, and, and, and we had a, a couple of qualitative studies, that's why the end is 26, but I'm gonna talk about the eight dyads. And we learned that better subject knowledge um, leads to more location awareness within the game. And that the navigator, it's a person who's in VR can take the explorers, sorry, the navigator, the person on the tablet can take the explorer's viewpoint, the person who's in VR. And um, so it's easier for the navigator to, to kind of take another perspective than it is for the um, explorer. So what this does is it helps with collaboration because if you give people different um, types of information, they're more likely to need to have interdependence and need to collaborate with each other. Um, we did a quantitative study in two local high schools that are both urban high schools and highly diverse. We found that um, the VR game improved players' ideas about the cell environment and processes and made an abstract concept like cells a hands-on concept. One of the students mentioned that they actually had to pay attention because you have to reach the goal and finish the game. And um, we also saw that students' post drawings of cells were more complex and detailed than their pre drawings. Finally, um, during the pandemic, or just before the pandemic, we did a quantitative randomized control trial where we compared a virtual reality and 2D view of the same game. One of the, the things about a lot of the VR uh, studies is that they're, they, they compare um, something that's very un interactive with something that's very interactive. So a PowerPoint to a VR um, situation. And so we wanted to compare the same game, same interactivity with VR versus two dimensional view. We found that VR improved um, people's understanding of cell processes and cell environments, that the VR view um, led to higher content gains than the 2D and that the VR supported spatial awareness. Um, so I mentioned that we have a kind of a lessons learned and best practices and it's at this tiny URL, VR cells. And um, one of the things we learned is that um, biology goes along even if you're, pro even during the project. And so um, that 
that um, kind of af affected our project, but our next steps is to look at collaboration in VR and learning spatial skills, because they're very important um, for, for STEM learning and for everyday navigation. And here's the team, and I wanted to thank you very much. There's my five.